Hey guys, I'm Ron and I have been hacking things my whole life. Today we are going to be starting a go-kart, electric go-kart series and this is part one. I'm going to kind of show you what I'm going to start with. We are going to be converting a gas go-kart over to an electric go-kart. I have chosen a racing go-kart frame. Um, I got this on offer up. It's like Craigslist and the guy wanted I think uh, $300 or something and then he relisted it for $200. I finally got it for $120 and I put it on the top of my car and I got it here. Um, which is funny because a lot of people, I drive a Mini Cooper and a lot of people think that the reason why you drive a Mini Cooper is you want to drive a go-kart. So it was kind of interesting to drive home after this purchase. Okay plan is to order some parts on the internet. I've watched a couple great videos and a couple YouTube links, like Jeremy's uh, website that's really helped me out in electric motors. And I want you guys all to learn something during this series. So we're gonna talk about everything, ex uh, we're gonna talk about amps and watts and torque and power. I'm gonna tell you where to get a go-kart engine that will work for your go-kart conversion from maybe a treadmill or maybe uh, a blender something because electric motors are very mysterious. Jeremy points out on his YouTube channel that size doesn't necessarily have to do with a lot of you know RPM and speed. It has more to do with torque. So it's very mysterious the electric motor market right now um, especially with all the electric cars happening. It's just kind of a neat time to learn about this. I'm actually going to be working on this project with uh, my friend Matt and he is an engineering student at ECU and he's going to help me out after I kind of get all the parts and everything else. So let me explain what I'm going to do in this video is uh, I am going to show you the parts that I got. I'm going to show you my plan. I'm going to talk about maybe the seat and I'm going to talk about a few other things. So let's get going. First thing I want to start out with is something that is a little bit less uh, important than the electric motors is these racing seats are, the racing seat is up there, it's red right there. It's a very small compact seat, you're just going to find it, squeeze in and I just don't want to do that. So this is the racing seat that I ended up getting. Um, this is a uh, Jess Jegs and I spent, can you believe it or not, this thing shipped to my house was $32. Okay, so now I have that there and I'll explain to you a little bit about how I'm going to do the uh, motor but the next thing I want to do is I I'm going to tell you what I'm going to start with. now. The thing that I'm a little concerned with with this electric motor kit I ordered online is that is the motor powerful enough? So I went ahead and watched some other YouTube videos as you guys do and I said okay how is this cart which weighs probably around 110 pounds plus me how is that going to have enough torque to get me along plus I'd like to at least go around 20 miles per hour whatever that is in kilometers and so I'm a little concerned about the size of this motor. So we're, without further ado, let's take a, let me get my blade and let's take a look at the kit because it came today. I came home and the kit was right outside my porch. United States Postal Service actually put it on the ground as opposed to my porch, which is quite odd because Amazon almost brings it to my bed, but United States Postal Service almost left it in the middle of the driveway. Maybe because they were shipping illegal batteries. I don't know because there's batteries in the package. Maybe they weren't lithium. That was the problem. The reason why they didn't put batteries is they weren't lithium batteries. They were lead batteries. All right, so let me get my blade and let's take a look at the size of this motor the batteries and all the things I got with this electric go-kart conversion kit. Okay, the first thing I'm going to start with is the batteries. This came part of this kit that came with the batteries, it came with the electric motor, it came with everything. But the question is how big is this motor? And if you watch a future video, you're going to find out does this motor power this go-kart? Okay, 
and there's four little pack boxes in there, these little boxes, and these are the batteries right here. So that is one battery. I got four in this kit. I put these in a series, and what's nice about these is the wiring is not all car battery-ish with a big old terminal. I can put, here's a diagram of what all this is gonna look like and how these four batteries are placed. But right now, these batteries probably weigh around six pounds. And I'm thinking, about placing the batteries two on each side, right here and right here on each side of the cart. So on each side of the driver I will have, on each side of the driver I will have two batteries um, because uh, I want everything centered because it's only a single person go-kart. So the next thing is what else came in the kit? So the, the package, this has got the motor in it, right? This has got the motor in it. The package is heavy in this corner. There's a controller in here, there's a joystick, and there's a handle grip, a throttle, and a coupler. So that stuff really doesn't weigh anything. I'm hoping the motor is at least a decent size, but I'll never know if it works until I actually wire this thing up and put it up against the go cart. Put it up to the, the torque the go cart needs. Okay. I believe the controller. The controller should have a ton of wires. Oh, it's actually the charger for the battery and it came with a uh, America, North America plug, a 110 plug, but this is the charger pack that will charge all the batteries. It doesn't seem uh, very heavy and it concerns me a little bit that it says electric scooter on there. So this is probably a scooter kit and I may have to be upgrading the uh, battery or the motor and the batteries. Um, to a bigger situation, but maybe it's enough. Okay, so the next up for bid is, this is the motor. Let's take a look at the controller. This is the controller again. Here is the wire harness situ up that I'm gonna put up the diagram. You can download that below if you're interested in how that works. And this is the wire harness. You can see from the drawing that there are a bunch of things that we're going to have to connect um, and I will love doing that. So this weighs around, uh, I don't know, five pounds. It says brain power motor. Of course, I'm putting the, these links in the description. Okay, so we got some wire harnesses. We have the throttle, which is used for a scooter or a bike. Um, I think this is the gas pedal. That's the gas pedal. This put some padding down at the bottom. Here's the coupler. Here is a key. That's kind of funny. And this is the motor. Here is the motor. The motor here. So this is what I've been waiting for. Let's take a look how big this motor is. Oh, hmm, that's the motor. Doesn't seem that small. It's very heavy. I'm making it appear bigger. Ugh. Oh my gosh, it is very heavy. It is very heavy. All right, so this is the motor. Since this is just part one, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about where I'm going to place this motor. So back here, I have 
So back here, I have the sprocket that goes in the back and that is a number 35 chain which means that pitch in between that I talked about is 3 eighths of an inch. This motor I'm planning to mount right here. I will be able to fit the new seat within this area. I will bolt this down and I will get a new sprocket for the electric motor that is that matches these teeth. Between these two if you take this diameter, this diameter, and the wheel diameter along with the RPM of your your motor, what the RPM is capable of, that is going to be your top speed. Anyways, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting me, and have a great day. Whatever you do, make something that connects someone. Take care.